Now we're going to turn this beautiful picture here of Perth and the Perth River here and the church and everything and make a beautiful 3D picture. So there's my main picture. Now what you need to do is to print out all the other sections. I've got one section here, uh, the next section, and I've cut that out as you can see. Now I've got the next one here, as you can see there, one, two, and then three. You've got all the different sections. Cut those all out first, and then we're going to put some double-sided tape onto the back of them here. Now there's various ways of doing that. You can use the foam pad, you can use silicon glue, but in this case I'm going to use the tape here, double-sided foam tape. And I want to try and keep this nice and sturdy. So I'm putting quite a bit on. It's not expensive, this tape. So you can afford to um, put as much as you like on. Now if you, if you find it a little bit difficult to find this or you want to uh, do something a bit different. I can also you can also cut out strips of cardboard and put that down the middle too. So first of all, I'm just going to put all these on. I'm going to put lots on uh, for me because I like the strength. But if you don't want to put as much on, you don't have to. Now, when you want to do things like here, that Peter uh, kind of. Uh, goes narrow to a point like what I normally do is cut a strip like so and then take your here take a strip and then just cut a fine strip down so it goes to a point like that I'm just putting that on one side and then starting at the top you can just put that down and then that will stick all the way down there so you can see that's nicely covered Let's just bring that up and pop that down there like so and then just fill up all these other little uh, areas here with little strips of the tape, the foam tape. Now I've put the tape over the back of the whole of all of it now and you can see I've cut some of these sections here just to cover it and then just take the tape off the back the double sided tape there uh, and then you're ready to just stick this down. I'm going to just slip the picture in underneath and then this turns over and then very carefully try not to stick it down when you first go don't press it down until you're absolutely happy it's in the right place then that can just stick down like that and you've got your first layer and you can see how that's building up now you're already getting that 3d look and then you do the same with the next one you just take the back off there and that layers up over the top there and bit by bit you build up the picture. Now it's just a question of taking all the layers and layering them up on top of each other as accurately as you possibly can. What helps is if you kind of slowly bend them over there a little bit, just try and shape it. It'll just curl over a little bit the leaves, the trees, etc. Just kind of rounds it off a little bit there as you go along. And you can see how that's really building up to give that 3D look. There you have the finished picture there, all 3D'd 
and layered up. Now you can leave that as it is if you want, so it gives you the watercolour look. We're going to layer it into a frame, and that will frame it off there. We'll show you how to do that in a minute. But I'm going to varnish this one so it gives it a really kind of, kind of almost like a ceramic effect to it. So there's the picture all layered up there, ready to mount. Now you can keep it like that if you want to, which just gives you that lovely watercolour effect, but you can also varnish it too. Lots of different layers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, as many as you like. The more you put on, the more like glass, almost china effect it gives. But you must only put it on very thinly each coat. And I've just got a nice soft brush here, and I'm just brushing this on. Now the varnish that I've got here is a water-based varnish. Now this one dries very quickly, it's uh, clear, totally clear when it dries, but the good thing is as well it doesn't go yellow as it ages, so make sure you do choose the right kind of varnish to use. Mind you, using the yellow one as well, and if it cracks and that can give you that really old antique look as well, so it's entirely up to you which one you choose. And I'm doing just a very thin layer first on the large bits here, so make sure you go in between all there as well in little bits that are sticking out. So I'm just doing the whole the main parts here first and then I'm going to do a very thin coat on the background here and just build up that there. If you put too much on it's all going to start wrinkling. It's better to put many coats on and keep just build up the glaze as you go along the varnish. So well, there we have the picture now. Now this has been uh, glazed with the varnish. About four layers went onto this one. You can see how beautiful and shiny that is now. Now you didn't have to uh, varnish it if you didn't want to, but now we're gonna put it together into its picture frame. Now to accommodate this height here, I've got some corrugated board here. You could have three or four layers, but I'm lucky enough to get this quite thick one. And these just go around the edges here. You just cut them to size and just place these around the outside of the picture. This is going to give you some height when you stick everything together. So that goes around there. <coughs> then you can put your mount over the top. Now we've cut this mount out to make it just slightly smaller than the picture so that it fits in there nicely and it's beautifully framed. Then you can put your glass on the top of that make sure it's been nicely polished and you've not got your finger marks all over it like I have and then finally you can take the frame itself and just position that over the top and just stick it all together and there you have the finished picture <laughs>